Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we're going to be doing a deck profile of a deck that I thoroughly enjoy playing. It's probably one of my top 10 favorite decks of all time, and that is my, in the words of Yuma, Utopia deck. Um, but yeah, Utopia is one of my favorite decks of all time. I actually started playing the deck back when we got out of the show and jump uh, as a promo, the number S0 Utopia Exec sold this card. I was playing it back when we had Star Draw. Goblinburg, 10 Goldfish, Rank Up Quick Magic, like uh, different times. <laughs> and then it became busted with the Pendulums. I was playing it way before that. So, yeah, I've been playing. This is originally why I built Utopia, but um, maybe Konami will bring it back one day. And I know a lot of you guys are say, going right now saying, uh, no, don't bring that card back. It's too broken now. Hey, a man can hope, a man can wish. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. But yeah, I love Utopia decks so much, and that's actually why years ago I brought this Ultimate Rare Utopia the Lightning specifically for this deck. So I keep it in here because that's how much I love the X XYZ mechanic, and I just like the Utopia and going for all his different forms. I know we're going to be getting a Structure deck soon, which is awesome. I can't wait to see everything that's in it, and when we're going to be getting it over here in the TCG, hopefully sometime next year, but only time shall tell. Uh, so let's get started guys. Uh, next we got three, first off we got three Utopic Automatopira. I will say that this card helped Utopia and Gagaga -Ga -Ga decks out so much. I will be doing a Gagaga -Ga -Ga deck profile very soon guys for you guys, so do expect that. But this card's so useful, it's a rank, it helps go for your basic rank 4 plays, which are Utopias. And in addition to that, it is a warrior card, which is, means it's searchable through Rhoda, which is also awesome. Um, and so it's a great card overall, I feel like. Staple three of, in my opinion. Um, next up, we run three uh, <laughs> uh, Dor -dor -dor Dwarf uh, -g -g Gloves and uh, Zubababa Bancho G -g -g Cloak. Like, Kunami, I know you built these off, you know, Automa Pyras or Pyras, whatever, however you say that, um, you know, what they're based off of. But, um, gosh dang, these names, man, for Yuma. Like I'm like Zubaba Bancho, uh, Google -go Gloves, your mama, your mama mamas, your da 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 da, your go 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 goes. Like uh, I know some of those are made up, like ga 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 da da da, mo mo mo. But I mean mama ma. But your mama told me to play the go go goes with the da da, with the ga ga gas, and it's a tongue twister, man. Like, ugh. but nonetheless, um, they're a great rank four package, and that's what matters the most, I think, right? <laughs> I know some of you laughing, and some of you shaking your head right now. But yeah, this pretty much is going to be some of you help you go for your basic rank four packages in this deck, which are mainly going to be Utopia. But staple uh, three ofs for all of these great cards. They can be searched out through Automa Pera. Uh, next up, we run ZS. As, uh, excuse me. Uh, what is it called? Ascendant Sage. I never. I forget that. I get the two mixed up. Ascendant Sage is awesome because it's going to help go for your generic rank four plays. But in addition to that, it's also going to help search up your rank up cards, which is something the Utopia deck really needed because of the inability to really search them out. Nowadays we have you know Zexo Construct, which is an awesome card, but we also have a way of going for a rank using this card for not just exceeds, but also to be another way to search out your rank up so you can get to your plays even faster. So that's great overall. Staple three of. Next we're on three ZS Armored Sage. Armored Sage is a staple three of as well. This is going to help go for your basic rank four exceed plays. But it also brings back a dead mechanic that nobody was using except for one or two cards in a Utopia deck. And that's the ZW mechanic. This gives you an easy way to search out your ZWs and go for your ZW plays, which is awesome and amazing. And that's why it's a staple three of, in my opinion. Now, speaking of the ZWs, I run different ZWs than maybe you do. And I want to talk about that for a moment. So let's get down to it. So I run one ZW Lightning Blade. Great card, staple one of. Uh, one ZW Pegasus Twin Saber. Some people run this, some people don't, but a majority of people do, and I think it's a great card. And then one ZW Azure Strike. Now you may be saying, hey, where is a ZW Tornado Bringer? And this comes from playtesting. Initially, I actually was running a ZW Tornado Bringer, and you can still run it, but I found that Lightning was better, and ZW Azure Strike, which I've been running for years, was doing a lot more for me than Tornado Bringer. What was it doing? Well, if you guys know Tornado Bringer, it's going to help you protect you from... Yes, it's going to give you attack, which is awesome. But while it's equipped to a monster, your opponent can't target that monster with card effects. Okay, 
that's cool. Um, the problem I have with that, guys, is a lot of stuff nowadays does not target. Back when ZW Tornado Bringer came out, things targeted a lot more, which gave you a lot better. It was better of a. It was a better protection card. Nowadays, there's a lot of things that don't target that makes this card null and void. I get it. It works very well in combination with ZW Lightning Blade. I get that to give you this ultimate beast of you know protection. But lots of things, you know, if you just have the tornado out, like legitly, guys, eh, like. It doesn't do enough for me. And the fact that if a monster equipped with this card would be destroyed by battle, destroy this card instead. I have... It's been a long time since I've had a Utopia card get destroyed by battle. <laughs> so it's pretty much just there for the attack and non-targeting. That's cool in R, and I understand you can use, you know, Tornado, you know, here for going for rank 5 exceed plays in your extra deck, which you may run. That's perfectly fine. I know some people, you know, run different Utopia cards for that reason. But uh, I found that's kind of, for me, that wasn't really worth it. So I was playtesting, and I just found, like, I was like, Tornado is not doing enough for me. So I switched it out and put Azura Strike in the deck. And what I found out is Azura Strike helps out a lot. This deck, Utopia decks, originally when Zexel was out, S. Zexel loved to go first. That was a staple thing because you were trying to go to Zexel as soon as possible. Nowadays, the decks like to go second a lot, the, the Utopia deck, because you, gotta, you want your opponent to have a board so you can crash through it. The problem with that is boards nowadays can be easily created with one or two card combos very easily. So sometimes you'll need a way to crack through a board. And Azure Strike can help you through that. Granted, you have multiple different ways you can do that with this deck, but Azure Strike helps you go bam, 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 get rid of a lot of monsters very quickly, clear a board out with simple, easy, just taking care of it. So it's up to you to decide. Um, a Lightning Blade, I think, is great on its own. It gave me all the protection I really needed, actually. Tornado Dragon, not so much. So it's up to you to decide. It depends, I think, on what you're trying, how you're trying to play the deck. Um, I get there's a lot of benefits to running Tornado. For me, playtesting, I found not as many um, in real life and in tournaments and online from playtesting. After a few months, I just was like, I don't like Tornado as much as I thought. Because I used to run it years ago, but then I cut it, and then I went back and put it in, and now I'm finding, like, yeah, I see why I cut it originally. So... That's just me. Uh, if you want to run it, go right ahead. I just found that this was more versatile. This is still good, and this is pretty decent even nowadays. So that's just me. Next up, we run three Ash Blossom and Joy Springs. Like I said, this deck really loves to go second, and Ash Blossom is going to help with that uh, because you want to negate stuff your opponent does and then go for your big exceed plays, etc. Uh, granted, you can run any hand trap that you want to, your Drill and Lock Birds, your Ghost Ogres, your whatever you want to run. So, three Ash Blossom and Joy Springs. Next, we run three Adama Pira. This is going to help search out your Gugugos, your Gagagas, your Dododos, your Mamamas, your Dadadas, and whatever else you want to search out. Yeah, this card searches out your Mama, your Mama. Um, that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, you can laugh now. Huh. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But this card's awesome. It's a great searcher. You get to discard one card, search a whole bunch of stuff out. Amazing card. One Adama uh, pickup. Uh, this card's a staple one of. I used to run it at three of. Now I run it uh, as a one of. In Gagagas, it's really good still. But in Utopia, I think it's just a staple one of now. Great card, though. Uh, Zexal Construct is a great card. I think this one day will be a great penny stock, maybe. I really do because of its versatile usage, not just in Utopia decks, but in multiple decks that focus around rank ups for its simple usage. So we'll have to wait and see, but I would pick these up if you want to because I think one day this card will go up in price. Uh, it'll be a good penny stock investment in my estimation in a couple of years. But great card for its versatile usage and help search out a bunch of different things. Uh, next up, we run three XYZ change tactics. I know some people run two of this and that's perfectly fine because you can't stack them. But this card is just so good. Like you go Utopia, one draw. Utopia Ray, second draw. Utopia, this, third draw. Like, it's an amazing card. It's worth it. 
So you don't need to run it as a three of, but I like it as a three of because of how useful it is and how essential it really is to get your engine going and be a draw power card. Next we run three Generation Force. Generation Force is gonna help search out a couple cards in this deck, but it's gonna help search out your XYZ change tactics and also your XYZ import. Uh, if you don't wanna search out your change tactics because you already have it, you can search out your XYZ uh, import, which is great. So that's, you get an optional target nowadays. So that's awesome. You had other options, but nobody ran them. <laughs> Uh, your rank up card you're going to be running is rank up magic Zexal Force. Great card in this deck, staple two of. Some people run three of. I find two of is perfectly fine. Plus, you can recycle it with Zexal uh, in Trust, which is great. Uh, but two cards, two of them. And it's easily searchable now. One XYZ change import. Uh, this does take some setup, and I do like the card, but um, that's why I'm just running it as a one of. It's an optional search thing to search out. And I will say I'm kind of bouncing back and forth if I want to run one or two of this card because of this other card. Granted, this card is not searchable, but it's very useful. Uh, and that's Glorious Numbers. Uh, Glorious Numbers is non-searchable, but very useful, I find. And I was kind of going back and forth between running two XYZ import and Glorious Numbers. And let me read off to you Glorious Numbers. If you don't know what this card is, um, it's very useful once you read it. If you control no monster... Target one number XYZ one number XYZ monster in your graveyard, special summon it, then draw one card. So it's pretty much an upstart goblin with pretty much you're running number monsters, so yeah, it's great. Uh, you can banish this card from the graveyard, then target one number XYZ monster you control. Attach one card from your hand to it as material. You can only use this effect of glorious numbers once per turn. Granted, I understand that, but the problem I've always had with Utopia decks, guys, is reborning the Utopia because you ran out of Utopias. You may say, what, what do you mean? You will go through Utopia very quickly, the basic Utopia, and you're going to need ways to bring it back to go off again. This helps with that conundrum. I was actually even thinking about running Monster Reborn, and I was like, I don't know. It's Monster Reborn generic, and Glorious Numbers is going to give me draw power and attachment power. Hmm went with glorious numbers and then i kind of went down to the phase of okay do i want to run xyz import as a two of or one of and i was like i'm just gonna try as a one of and you can go to one or two of and you don't have to run glorious numbers but like i said still play testing everything but i really like glorious numbers for its versatile usage and xyz imports is a great card to have but you can run it as a one or two of Zexal uh, in Trust is a great card. Staple one of. A lot of people weren't running this card initially, but I think it's a staple one of in every Utopia deck now. Very good. Very useful. Uh, we also run one double or nothing. This helps you go for your pretty much Utopia double, which can do stuff on its own and wipe out stuff too. And uh, one reinforcement of the army as well. So, like I said, there's different way, different cards you can run, different ratios. This is what's working for me. Reinforcement staple. Uh, Monster Reborn, you can try to fit in there too. But Glorious Numbers was a little bit more versatile. XYZ Imports, you can play around with. Zexal Tornado, you can play around if you don't, if you feel like Double does enough for you. Uh, but that's uh, that's up to you. Like if you think Double does enough for you and you don't need to run uh, Azure Strike, then hey, go right ahead. But uh, let's go on to the extra deck now. Uh, we run our Utopia, number S Utopia, the Lightning, staple one of. Uh, Tornado Dragon is my generic card I run, as well as uh, Gagaga Magician. Uh, we also run three Utopia. I was debating running three Utopia because of space reasons and the ability to easily bring it back with things like Glorious Numbers and other cards. You can play around with that. If you feel like there's anything in the extra deck you want to cut so that you can easily more go for, um, uh, excuse me, uh, number F0 Utopic Draco Future, then go right ahead. If you want to cut some cards out to do that, to make easily go for this card more easily, go right ahead. But uh, I was having some space issues, I will say that. Uh, but this is what I'm, This is pretty much some of your basic stuff here. We're also running Ultimate Draco Utopia Ray, um, number ZW Draco Halbert, which is a great card. I like these as one of. Some people run multiple of these, but I like them one of each. One Utopia Ray. This is easy stack on ability and to draw cards and just get more materials on your monster. Uh, S39 Utopia Prime. Do not underestimate this card. Do not just think of this card strictly as a Utopia stacker. This card on its own can come back and win you games for you. On its own. Great card. Uh, one double. 
pretty straightforward for your double or nothing play. In addition to that, we run number F0 Utopic Future and number F0 Utopic Draco Future. Like I said, you could run more different cards if you want to help make this go into it more easily. Uh, I do run number 99 Utopic Dragon. This is something I'm debating about if I want to keep in the deck or not. Utopic Dragon is very versatile, again, for bringing back Utopia cards to help stack on things and go for things. But that's up to you to decide. Uh, I found that sometimes the rank up, while it is good, while it is useful for going for things, it, it there's a lot of instances where I'm just like, I don't want to go for a rank up. I need a big beater on board. I need this on board. I need that on board. Um, I want to you know put a lot of damage in very quickly. So... This can help me bring something out, a basic Utopia, stack on something, stack on something, go for Lightning maybe, go for something else, um, and then have this on board as well. So, I like it because I own the card, but you don't have to run it. You could cut this out and run something else if you want to. And the last card I run is one Divine Arsenal AA Zeus because I own the card, and you got to run AA Zeus in this deck if you have it, because if something gets negated, if you want to easily attack with something and blow, you know, do things with Zeus, go right ahead. It's really, really useful in this deck and gives the deck even a higher power, power ceiling, which is awesome. So like I said, you can play around with the extra deck. I think the extra deck is the main thing I'm still working on with ratios. Like I said, maybe two, not three. I know everybody runs three, but... I'm wondering that. I'm wondering, hey, do I want to run Tornado Dragon with Castell instead because of versatility things so I could go for future more? There are a lot of things I'm playing around with this deck in the extra deck, a lot of. So um, if you've played with something, you think it's good as is, let me know. If you think you, there's things you would add, let me know too. But uh, hopefully this deck profile was helpful for you guys that are building Utopia. Hopefully you got a lot of information and insight on how to play Utopia and the different ways you can play it in different cards and ratios. Till next time guys, take care, have fun dueling, and remember to subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos and content. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and good luck dueling to all of you guys out there, and I'll see you guys next time. Seto Kaiba, I'm out.